Hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we are going to be hiring adventurers and archaeologists in order to explore the ruins of a forgotten temple in Quetzal, the city of sacred birds. This one is a pretty straightforward worker placement game in which you are going to be sending out your little wooden meeples. You are going to be collecting cards, and then you are going to be taking those cards to the port in the game. You're going to be scoring victory points for that. End of five rounds, whoever's got the most victory points is going to be the winner. Like I said, it's a fairly straightforward game, especially if you are familiar with worker placement games. This is a fairly simple one in that style of game, with a couple of little quirky bits to it. Things like, at the beginning of each round, you pick up all your meeples and you roll them as though they were dice. Depending on what comes up, you're going to get bonuses, etc. So, there you go. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Let me show you how it works. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. The game's going to be played over five rounds, tracked right over here. And then at the end of those five rounds, whoever has the most victory points on this track is going to be the winner of the game. During each of these rounds, the players go through four distinct phases. The first one, you're going to be rolling your meeples. That's right, rolling your meeples. Uh, from that, you might make a little bit of money, but mainly you are setting whether your characters, your workers for the round, are going to be archaeologists, if they come up on this side, or if they are going to be adventurers, if they come up on this side. If they come out and on one of their sides, say not clearly on one face or the other, then they are wild and you can place them as whatever you want to. And if when you roll them they are perfectly standing up, then you are also getting a coin from that, and they're wild, all right? That's the first thing. The second phase, you are going to be placing them out there. Players are going to be taking turns until they've deployed all the uh, workers, and uh, the different locations will, of course, do different things. We'll come back to that. Third phase, we are going to trigger all of these locations. They have a large number in the corner, and we are going to go through the board, triggering, collecting things, uh, selling things off, taking actions uh, in all the different locations. So we have one, two, this is three, three A, three B, three C, four over here, and then five is this, six this one, these ships, these two ships are seven. Um, so that's what you're doing. There's also this spot here that doesn't have a number, it just happens as soon as anyone goes there. And the final and fourth phase is very simple. It's just getting the board ready for the next round, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at what all of these locations do. This first one here is to take the start player token. You also get to move up on this track over here, which will unlock certain benefits the higher up you go on it. If you are the first player, you cannot go here, and you have to go there with an archaeologist, as it denotes on the little picture, all right? The second spot is right here, and uh, as players go there, they have to, it's mostly archaeologists that you can have an adventurer or an archaeologist on this final spot. As soon as you go there, you're going to pay some amount of coins, five, four, three, etc. And then once it's resolved, you'll gather some of these cards. For example, if you're at the very top of the list here, you get two of these face up. Eventually, you'll get one face up, one drawn simply from the deck, and finally down here, just one of these. This three over here lets you get these pairs of cards, and these spots with this dotted outline and that symbology, those are bid for. Whereas these, you can simply go there, you pay your money, it's yours. Over here, once I send some characters there, and it can be either... Uh, archaeologists or adventurers, though they do all have to be the same. So I can send, say, two adventurers there. Somebody else on their turn could outbid me there, send three, it has to be the same kind, okay? I'll take these back, and then eventually, you know, they might get bumped themselves. Eventually, someone will win it, of course, and once we resolve it, they'll get those two cards. Uh, same thing for the other two, of course. This one over here allows you to send one of your adventurers there. You will discard one of these cards. Take seven coins. We go up here to five, where you'll send mostly adventurers. The bottom one can take either. You'll pay some coins when you go there, and then you're allowed to take one of these tiles. Everybody has one of these boards in front of them. 
Once you win these tiles, you can attach them to these spots. Those are uh, bonuses you will permanently be able to use. Some of them have a, a red X that means you do whatever it says you do immediately and then just tuck it away. Only for the victory points, basically. In this case, this tile here lets you move once on this track. It's worth two victory points and then it does absolutely nothing else. These will continue to do something. This, for example, three points lets you re-roll some of your meeples. This one over here lets you spend coins to move up on this track up here. And once you get a new one and would rather keep that, you can simply take one from one of these spots and, well, tuck it away down here. No longer uh, keep it in use. All right? Uh, and there's a variety of those. I'm not going to go through them. I'll let you find those out on your own, but there are quite a few different ones there. After that, we're going to go to this spot where we are going to take all these goods and sell them in sets, ideally. Uh, this one here uh, is unlimited. Any number of players can go there. You send any character there, you do pay two coins, but then you are allowed to sell three cards. What do we mean by that? Well, if I have three cards in my hand, let's say these three, they are all the same kind of thing. I know that because of the symbol in the corner right here, okay? And if I sell three, then I am going to be making five points. That's what this down here tells me. If I sell a single card, one point, two cards, three points, three, five. Once I do that, if I get rid of all three of these, I am going to, of course, get those five points. I'm also going to check the tops of the cards for possibly anything else, any other bonuses. This one right here gets me another point. So I'm actually selling these three cards for six. And I would track that over here on the scoreboard, okay? I can sell whatever combination I want. So let's say instead of all that, what I actually ended up with was these cards. I could still sell three. I could sell these two that match for three points, so let's reset that, one, two, three. I could sell this one, a single card of that, for two points, one, two, and then I make sure I check those bonuses. Extra point for this one, fine, one coin from this one, so I would take a coin, all right? And then I get rid of these. Once that's done, everybody again could do that, you can uh, go there uh, regardless of who else is taking up the spot, then there's these spots out here, which are exclusive. They are bidding spaces much like these, and whoever wins those can sell up to six cards at those locations. And that's basically it. The only spot I haven't talked about is this one right here. When you send a character there, you will immediately get one coin and re-roll the rest of your meeples. That happens immediately. It'll let you change the distribution, maybe make some coinage. Uh, that's all there is to it, pretty much. At the end of the five rounds, you have already scored some points. You are going to score these points from the special crates over here. And you are going to score two points if you have the start player token, as it denotes right there. This track also throughout the game, like I said, will give you special benefits. Say a coin early on, maybe a point up here, but then if you make it all the way to the top you are going to be getting four points and six points, all right? One thing that's quite easy to miss is these three locations do have a secondary bonus above and beyond getting these two cards, this one being a point, a tick up on this track, or simply a coin. So there you go. That's all there is to the game. It's a fairly straightforward game. It's quick. It's simple to play. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. I tend to enjoy light worker placement games. I find them to be engaging, to have a little competition between the players, but not to be necessarily too taxing. There are a lot of worker placement games out there. Most of them, lately especially, sort of tend to gravitate towards the, the heavier side of the spectrum with a lot going on, many places in which to put your workers, lots happening to score you victory points. This one is not that. This one is, there's a handful of places you are using them all in one way or another to collect cards or take them to the port. That's it. I mean, you need money to collect cards, so some of the spots make you money, right? I mean, that's really it. That is what you are doing. It's kind of a, it's generally a one lane sort of, you know, uh, strategic game, which is fine. You know, how well you do that thing is what denotes how well you do in the game. So, 
that's not a problem. But some of the parts in the game are a little flat or uninteresting, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. So let's go ahead and get into it, okay? I'm going to start with the things I did not like so much. So nothing, nothing was a, a big negative, really. And then we're going to talk about the, uh, the things I did enjoy. So we're going to start with the theme. It's Indiana Jones-esque. Not terribly exciting. I could see some people having an issue with the theme as well. You are going into this place and taking all these artifacts. I don't know if you're selling them. Or, as far as the game tells you, you take them to the port. That's it. However, you do. there is an economy in the game. You do have money, which doesn't translate exactly thematically as to why you need money to go into the temple and acquire artifacts. But, anyway. So I can see some folks finding it uh, distasteful, right? I did not have a problem. I, don't think, I think it's fairly abstracted, you know. Uh, but I also don't find it terribly exciting. It's an okay theme. It's just a coat of paint uh, for me. Replay value is a fairly samey game. That is because it is a small game. It's a smaller game than looking at this on a shelf would lead you to believe, I think. Again, that's not bad. It's just better if you know that going in, right? This game is, yes, a worker placement game, but it's a quick one. It's a straightforward one. So the replay value is ties to that. It's okay. It does have a really nice two-player mode with a variant, a quote-unquote dummy player, but it's very well handled. It stays out of your way. does not require a lot of upkeep from the people playing. Um, so I like that. I've played a different player counts. They're all good, including that two-player uh, mode. Uh, and then the other thing is the game arc. There is some tension in the last round, especially. But you are sort of doing the same thing. You might have a couple of highs and lows, but overall, while you're fighting for a couple of places, maybe, yeah, overall the game arc is, I'll say, fairly predictable. Okay? Things I did like. The aesthetics. Good component, component quality. Uh, board is a touch busy, but it's well laid out. Everything makes sense where it is. Everything is easily digestible and understood, uh, aesthetically speaking, okay? The uh, ease of play. It's nice. It's smooth. It's a uh, turn breakdown or round breakdown makes sense for this game. Prepping your meeples, placing them but not really triggering them, and then going around the board triggering them. It reminds me of Pillars of the Earth, if you are familiar with that. Though I would say Pillars of the Earth is a heavier game than this game. Lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. I like it. Like I said, yes, I think it's kind of like a one big lane sort of strategy. Get the stuff, make points with it, you know, sell them or take them to the, to the port. But you've got that secondary track at the top. You can focus on that. And if you do, you need to do it pretty heavily or you can ignore that. You can make sure you have a good amount of money on hand to make you flexible. Always go to the central, you know, large market and, and go, go towards the top there. You can go for the special, those crates with the special abilities, which I definitely would recommend. You want to make yourself different from the other players in the game. So there's a nice amount happening. And that's a lot of a, that is sort of tactical, you know, you have a bunch of things you want to sell, the boats get taken up by people bidding outrageous amounts of meeples, so you need to adjust to that, right? There's, uh, no one's going to accuse this game of having low player interaction, is what I'm saying, right? I did not necessarily love, at first, the rolling of the meeples as a mechanism. To be fair, I still don't, but I'm the only one that I've played with who hasn't found that to be silly and charming and engaging. I would have simply loved for those to just have been dice. Give me six-sided dice with two faces, have the archaeologists, two faces, have the uh, adventurers, and then the other two have are split. And one of those two gives you a coin. That would be so much nicer if I could just roll dice. And every time I go to that spot where I re-roll, I take my coin and I re-roll just dice. But I guess I'm in the minority there, okay? 
So there you go. That's all there is to it. Overall, this is a lovely little game. But it is a fairly little game. And I do worry that folks are going to look at this game. They're going to perhaps look at the back of the box and think this is a big, grandiose worker placement game with a lot going on it and then they play it and they're rolling meeples and they are um, playing in 45 minutes it's not big and it's a fairly small game strategy wise as well still i enjoy it i think it's engaging and every time i've played it with any player count i've found myself having a good time trying a couple of different things a combination of a couple of different things so my bottom line this one gets a 7 out of 10 it's good. It gets a seal of approval from me. I would certainly not hesitate to recommend it to anyone who enjoys lighter worker placement games. Don't dislike this theme, though I don't think the theme's going to bring you in, you know? Uh, and you are not put off by the idea of rolling meeples as though they were dice. That's basically that, everybody. This is the game, Quetzal. Hope you enjoyed that overview and my final thoughts. My name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one.